Hi, this is Yasmita Megan from Melbourne, Australia. I'm the designer of the Yazzie craft storage bags, and I'm quite excited today to be uh, interviewing someone very special from Nativeville in Illinois, in the US right now. And uh, she's agreed to be part of this session because she's a talented quilter, and she has just launched a book on the 25th of September, and she's going to tell us all about it during the session. So I'm gonna begin showing you a little video clip as to what we're hoping to see now during the interview, and then we'll let her talk to us about what she does. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Asmita. Oh, it's uh, good. It's morning here in Melbourne, Australia, and I know it's your evening the day prior. I'm really excited, and I appreciate the fact that you've agreed to spend some time with us to talk about what you do, introduce your book to the market. Uh, we're quite excited to hear your journey about your journey in the quilting world. If you can just help us understand what you do and you know what inspires you in the world of craft as you know I'm not a crafter but we've met so many times over the years at various live shows in the US and uh, it's always been a pleasure to chat with you and I really appreciate what you do and respect your talent around all of this so thank you for making this time and I'm going to ask you now to sort of tell us everything you want to about what you do and your book launch. Okay, well, thanks. Yeah, it's actually, it's dark outside here. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the uh, Midwest of America, right right in the middle, just, just south of Chicago. So we, we moved here actually from England in 1995. So I was brought up in the Northwest of England and I went to a girls school and uh, learned to stitch when I was like seven or eight. So I've been doing embroidery a long time. So uh, when I was at high school, I uh, embroidered my jeans. I did needlepoint when I was at university. I'd put my textbook here and then I'd have my, you know, my, my needlepoint here. And it, I, my excuse was it helped me concentrate anyway. So, you know, then I, I got married and I had children and I did cross stitch. I actually got published as a cross-stitch designer. And then we moved to the States. 
So, you know, we moved to the States and we we came on H-1B visa, which uh, is the, the professional visa that, that get, my husband could work, but the rest of us couldn't. We, we were just there for ornamentation and to cook meals. So I had to find something to do and, and I kept meeting quilters. So I learned to quilt and uh, being practical, you know, a, a, a new immigrant, I needed to to make sure it was practical. So I thought, well, if I learn to do this, then maybe I can make it into a job one day because quilting is a very expensive hobby. And uh, I felt I needed it to, you know, actually have a reward at the end of it. So I, I learned to quilt, I took lots and lots of classes and I did eventually become a quilting teacher. But I'm still here in the States 25 years later. So uh, I've been on the road teaching since since the, all the children left home. They, I mean, they're all married. My eighth grandchild's due next week. So um, yeah, I went on the road about 2013. And of course, when, you, when you're when you on the road national teacher, you need to have your specialities. And so my specialities are machine quilting on a domestic machine, but then it's handwork because I've been doing handwork for the longest time. And these days people are wanting to have something in their hands. You know, some of the time they even want to slow down, even, even in the States, people want to slow down and, and do something where they can just be calm and, you know, when everything else is crazy. So I've, I've been teaching hand embroidery, I've been teaching wool applique. And a couple of years ago at market, I met the, met the folks from uh, CNT and they asked me about writing a book. So, well, why not? You know, I, I'm all about taking the next step, uh, leaping into the next adventure, just finding out what happened. So it was very exciting when a couple of weeks ago, a box arrived at the house with the copies of my book, because, you know, it's, it's, it's not a quick project to write a book. I actually, for me, I actually, signed the contract uh, in May and the book was delivered in September. So actually I did it quite quick, but uh, I had I had the designs drawn out. All I needed was to finesse everything and then um, make step outs, make projects, your know, things to put in the book. But it wasn't like I was starting from scratch. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to do a book with designs in it so that your regular stitcher can take this book and uh, using some of the instructions in it, they can make their own projects. It, so it's not a stitch guide and it's not a project book. It is a design book. So if I if I look inside, you know, we, we it's I mean, I love the job that they made of it. OK, so it's very, very colorful. But what we've got is we've got how I go about starting my embroidery projects, how what what tools I use, how I uh, transfer the designs, has some basic stitches, it just has a chain stitch and some variations, it has uh, close-ups of other stitches, and then it has a gallery in the middle, and I'm going to come back to that, and then it has, it has wool applique, how, how I transfer my designs, how I stitch them, and all that good stuff, lots of tips and tricks, uh, that I've learned along the way that people in my classes have always enjoyed. And then we have the designs and we have 12 uh, designs. And what they are, are they are 12 butterflies, moths and other flying insects. And it's a simple line drawing that um, you use and you either do the embroidery or you do the wool applique. With the wool applique, we've got all the pieces, all all. Uh, taken apart so you can trace it and you can do them. Um, and I'm just hoping that people will enjoy doing these and then they'll be inspired to actually do some of the stitching. Cause I mean, how many of us buy books and don't use them, but hopefully, you know, it'll, it'll be a useful book cause it's got lots of tips and tricks, but that they will, people will actually stitch some of the butterflies and use them. So, um, you know, I didn't want to have like a quilt pattern. There's just pictures of quilts where I use the butterflies. So actually I was teaching wool applique via Zoom this afternoon. So I, I have my wool applique ones on the wall behind me. So um, so this one here, if I'm sort of uh, try and move out the way a bit, this one here has all the 12 butterflies and they're all stitched actually onto linen backgrounds, which sort of keeps the price down a little. 
and then made into a quilt, finished with quilting. You know, so there you go. And then this one, it has them all again. But these are actually the ones that I used for the step outs in the book. So when it came back, I had the 12 squares, I put them together, I put borders on it, nice crazy quilt border, and, and that became um, a quilt. Okay, so you know that's what most people think of when they think of quilt books, they're gonna make quilts. Um, but not everybody wants to make all the butterflies. So if you just wanted to do one, okay, and I'm, I'm going to save the best till last, just so you know. You know, you could get a tote bag, and this is just a, a, a tote bag where you can buy, it's a kit and you buy the pieces. But see, I just stitched one of the embroideries and made it into a pocket and, and put it on the outside of the bag. And then it becomes a personal piece just for you. But you know, most people, when they, when they make something, they do want to make something that they can use and that their friends will see. They don't want to just you know, stitch it and put it in the box. So tote bags are good. You know, if you uh, don't want to take it out of the house, you might want to make a pillow. Here we are. This one, my friend Sheila actually made. So this one, here's, here's a pillow. Just one of the embroidery designs with some nice borders finished you know, into a pillow. If you'd rather hang things on the wall, if pillows aren't your thing, here they are. These ones just... What, they, what I did with them was put simple borders on them and then these are attached to canvases. So you can see it's just a bought canvas and they're stapled on, but these can be put onto the wall and, you know, so they'd look nice somewhere in your house, nice and bright and cheerful. But you can, you can make any of these in any colour way because the actual designs are based on like real butterflies or real insects but I've made no attempt for them to be, you know, the right color or even the right designs on them. It's just more the shape of the wings and everything that is actually taken from life, okay? So sort of a folk arty type style, you know, sort of relaxed. Um, I always encourage my students just to give it a go. We're not looking for perfection. We're just looking to enjoy ourselves. Now, so this, this wall hanging illustrates this is actually the same butterfly but i did it in three colorways so you've got the three colorways see so you can see you don't i i absolutely don't do the same thing twice unless i really have to i told you i'm still saving the best till last okay i'm still working on something so uh when i did the step outs for the book I, I did them on some a really nice um, handmade fabric. It's actually from uh, Malaysia, this fabric. And so, of course, these came back from having their pictures taken. And then I've been making them into a quilt. So I've, I've got this quilt. So I need to move away a bit so you can see it. So it's not finished quilting yet and it's not bound. So you're getting, you're getting a sneak peek, but see how, how vivid the colors are on, on these beautiful uh, hand dyed fabrics. Okay, so um, this is going to have all 12 butterflies. One of the things I like doing is making them in the each one into like standalone designs. So this is a, a technique where I put wool felt behind it uh, and then it becomes a piece I can put on a quilt. So what I've done is I've got 10 that are still on their backgrounds and then down the bottom I've got a space where I will be putting uh, two more. They'll, they'll go on top of this when that's when that's quilted. So still a work in progress. You know, whenever you think you're catching up, something else gets in the way, doesn't it? You know, I, I was going to have a really busy year this year. I mean, I was not supposed to be home. I was in California, you know, when America got put uh, put on lockdown. And I've been home ever since. So, um, you know, you'd think I'd have lots of time, but the last couple of months, you know, I, I really started doing Zoom teaching and everything and um, time disappears. So this 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 quilt, I, I do like this one. So this one, what I did with this one was I made 
I made every butterfly, so it's all 12 designs, and I made them you know, into a, a standalone uh, applique piece. And then I put it on the background, and this is just one piece of fabric in the background. It's a, a really nice, I, I really like these dandelions, you know. Dandelions were introduced to the United States. They weren't a native plant, but apparently people missed them when they moved here. And they so they brought the seeds over. Now, that, of course, they're everywhere. So um, anyway, so here's the butterflies flying around on this background. So I told you, best to last. Let's see what I'm talking about. Well, which comes as no surprise, I'm sure, to see that I've also put the designs onto my Yazzie bags. Okay, so this is this is just one. This is one of them. This is the wool applique, and this is one of them. And um, so I made one, and I I, I put it on some uh, wool to give it more of a background. And then it's so simple. You've got this nice flat background. You know, it, it's quite simple to then whip stitch this down onto the background. Then you know, when when I when I use my bag, I can I can remind myself how clever I am. And, um, you know, I can take it with me and let, we can have a look inside. So what I decided was this is my wool applique one. So I thought it might be a good idea if this one became my bag, that I kept my wool applique things in. OK, so, you know, these are so, so, they're so much fun. You can put so much in here. It's, it's nowhere near full. So I've got my wool thread. I've got my favourite hand-dyed embroidery thread from our friend Richard. I've got um, some basting thread, some thread for when I um, do a little cotton applique if I want to. Scissors, needle threader. Everybody needs a needle threader, don't they? Uh, what else? That's that's just the first one. Oh, I've got my, I've got a little uh, needle case I made there, a wool one. Oh, lots of scissors. We, we've got some nice big scissors for cutting through the wool. A pen, rotary cutter. Oh, the project I was teaching this afternoon, just a, a little introduction piece. And, the, and so you've got all those pockets, but then in the bottom, see, I've got, I've even got room for bigger things like, you know, I've got some wool for my next project and my bigger box with needles in, but it keeps everything in. So all I can do is just pick that one up and put, take it into the family room and, uh, you know, when we've got yet another debate on or something interesting, then I've got I've got something something to stitch. But I have more. Can you believe it? Because you know who wants just one Yazi bag? Come on, let's face it. You know, so I did another one, and here we go. So this wow, one, wow. this one, this one I did with my embroidery. So this one is it. I mean, they're just so simple to do because I do not like putting zips in things. The zip's already done. I do not like sewing through vinyl. The vinyl's already done. Some people like to make their own bags. No, this one is ready done. Why do I need to bother? Anyway, so here we are. So this one is just the one embroidered on onto the cotton background and then the edge of the cotton background is stitched down. You know, I do sometimes wonder whether I should put some like rickrack. You know, I could put some rickrack around the edge or something, but I haven't done that yet. So it made it into the book. So, you know, the publisher thought it was OK. So what's in here? This one, you know, you can still zip them up, even if they're really quite full. That is one thing I have found. So, OK, well, in this one, oh, in, in this in this pocket here, I've got pencils and uh, the leads, you know, and the white chalk, because when I when I do my designs uh, for the embroidery, I like to use like a permanent marker for the outline. But then if I want to put little bits in to help me do the extra stitching, I use chalk pencils. So those are in there. More of my favorite threads over here. Needles and needle threader, because I need a needle threader in every bag because I do. OK, you know, it's like when when I started out wearing my readers, you know, and you have your readers on and then you lose them. So you have them in every room of the house. And then I gave in and I, I got the very focals because then I put them on in the morning and I don't lose them. It's a good thing. Oh, I've got some first aid supplies here. I've got a band aid and a nail file. And 
have a wipe, you know, like a antiseptic wipe, because we, we're all supposed to have those these days. Um, more scissors, scissors, scissors for embroidery, more pens. Another needle case. Oh, and there's a thimble in case I ever decided to use it. And then, you know, we've got this bottom section. You know, I'm, it's really handy that you've got the depth there. I've got a little felt pad because this is useful for some of the special stitches. I've got, oh, Apple Pops. I don't know whether you've seen those. They kept, everybody kept telling me I needed them, so I bought them. And then I've not had time to use them. I've got an, another needle threader for non-embroidery needles, just in case I need that, in case my glasses let me down. And then, oh, we have some flatter spray if I need to press something. And then, oh, I have, now this is the project I'm working on at the moment with my embroidery. And this is really how I, I start everything. I just, I, I work out my design and then I trace it onto my fabric and let's see if we can get that the right way up. I don't know if anybody can guess what it is because the black lines actually aren't showing up, but it is totally drawn on there. This is a bird, okay? It's a bird, that's its tail. And this is its wing and it's beginning beginning to take flight. So, um, but that, that fits in there too. And, and then we have some sashiko because who doesn't need a sashiko cleaning rag? Although I'm, I don't think I'm really going to use it as a rag because sometimes I just don't want to concentrate. And then these are great for sewing when it's like that. So uh, I have one of these ready to sew. So you can get so much in there. But what I, you know, for me, what I really like was I could decorate it and I could, I could make it my own. And, um, you know, I, I could decorate it with something I've even designed and everything. So um, I just need to go somewhere so I can show people. Now, I can say that this is fabulous, so, uh, Catherine. I must admit, Ulta bags, I couldn't believe, you know, you've decided to use the Yazzie bag, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I think there's a bit of an echo, I'm not sure what's going on, but yeah. I'll try and control that. Give me a second. Okay. Does it sound okay to you, Catherine, as I'm speaking? I, I did hear a little echo. So, yeah, yeah. But I can I hear you. you. Okay. Well, you were a long I'm way away, you know. Yeah. Now, I think the bags look fabulous and everything you've done, your quilts are amazing, amazing. And unfortunately, this year, everything's happened during this lockdown when you were going to fly a long way, like all the butterflies out there. But unfortunately, we just all have to wait till we get to the right point in our lives. And the fact that you have launched a book, which is so exciting, I'm sure everyone's going to receive it so well. I'm so happy that I'm going to be able to present it to the Australian audiences very quickly now. And the fact that you provided the time, I mean, normally I wouldn't be able to catch you during the year. You got such a busy schedule. With I, I was not supposed to be home today. <laughs> yeah, now I do appreciate it so much and I must say everything you've shown us and shared with us, all your little projects where you're applying this technique and this whole concept of the butterflies. You know, people love butterflies generally, it's such a popular one and you've chosen the perfect uh, product to start promoting in your book. And as you said, it's a technique. They can put it anywhere. It doesn't restrict them. They can make it bigger or smaller, whatever they oh, need. Absolutely. To do. So, I yeah. mean, you can you could actually take the designs in the book and just print them out. You know, at seventy percent, or you could print them out. Yeah. You know, you can actually you can you can. I really hope that people take them as a starting point oh, for, for making fun. something. And you know, yeah. and the the Australian stitchers, they do beautiful work. You know, yeah. it must be something about living in, in, a, in a sunny place and in, in a relaxed atmosphere because people down there, I mean, you, they just seem to do wonderful things. So it'd be lovely to see, um, to see, see that, you know, that, that little extra style there. You know, one day I'm going to get to Australia. 
don't know when it will be but you know after i watch crocodile dundee right that you know it, it took me a lot of trips to florida to see an alligator but i need to come to to australia to see one of those big crocodiles yeah, hopefully no you if things improve we look forward to seeing you here in australia and you're right australians are generally extremely talented very creative i hear yeah. that at every international show and you know we've been out there for 20 years now with our yazi craft storage bags and uh we've got a wonderful range of products and people are embellishing it and you've just found another technique to uh, apply to our bags it will inspire a lot of people out there you know to buy a yazi bag connect it to buy one of your books yeah. and try embellishing it with a butterfly and whatever size they want to they can reduce it to one of our smaller bags expand it i yeah. think it's just an amazing even as a non-craft i've sort of i recognized throughout your session as you spoke what exactly the impact of it is and this is just one year with one book i know yeah. you've got a lot more coming your way you'll see and yeah and i'm so excited that uh, you were able to at least explain all of this to us well, thank so, you i do appreciate your time today catherine i really do and hopefully we can catch up again when next year when you've got a little more time depending on it i mean we'll make a booking from now tentatively and see how we go when you've got something else another book launch of yours okay right? yeah that, that sounds excellent no um it's i i really just wanted to um use use products and bear and things you know that i like you know so so it was it was it was an easy choice yeah, now I appreciate that everyone does love the bags and you've done amazing work now I'll be so proud to start showing this around we will present your interview anything you have to add you're welcome to send it across and uh, I'm sure you'll get a lot of Australians looking for your book right now and I'll let them know it's from CMT as well okay thank thanks ever so much okay. thank you for your time all Thank right you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.